it going, everybody? So you have a fun review today as we're talking Season 2 of The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Considering Season 1, two years ago, was pretty divisive online, I mean, even myself, I mean, I enjoyed some aspects to Season 1 overall, but I also had a lot of problems with it as well, which I discussed two years ago. But still, nevertheless, there was enough in Season 1 where I was invested to see where exactly the story could lead into Season 2, especially now that it seemed like we're done with the mystery here, Sauron's been revealed. Now, all my thoughts in this video are based upon the first three episodes of season two. Those are the ones that Amazon provided early, which admittedly does make it a bit more difficult to discuss everything because I don't have the full picture of the entire storyline. However, more or less, season two feels like a marginal improvement now that the groundwork has been laid for each of the individual storylines. Right off the bat, season two feels as if we're delving a lot deeper into the story, opening up these characters more. Each of their individual journeys explore fascinating new layers and conflicts. So some of these storylines are more compelling than others, all of them are engaging in their own way. Mileage will definitely vary for your interest level depending on which characters in the show you prefer. There is a vast amount of characters that this show follows, whether it's Galadriel, Elrond, the Dwarves, the Numenorians, the Stranger and the Harfoots, and Erendir. To be honest, it kind of feels exhausting just how many characters are in this show to keep up with. Thankfully, at least, they don't cram all their storylines into each individual episode. Some of these episodes, the characters don't even appear in them. I mean, Erendir and Isildur don't even show up up until episode 3. Being that obviously this series is called The Rings of Power after all, and we finally got the rings in the last episode, I love so far how they factor into the overall story. You do get a showcase of the powerful different effects that they bring to those that wear them, and it's a major factor in the overarching story. Because of how powerful they are, how bad it possibly may be if they keep them, or even worse, let them fall into Sauron's hands. So there's a lot of debate on what exactly we should do with these rings of power. To be completely honest, for the most part, I was agreeing with Elrond assessment of the situation, all the solutions he had for everything. Out of these first three episodes, I think Elrond overall is my favorite character of the bunch. He definitely doesn't mince any words about the rings or his disappointment in Galadriel being deceived by Sauron. Speaking of Galadriel, who was probably the most controversial character online in season one, she kind of takes a back seat in these first few episodes. In large part due to her wrestling with a plethora of mixed emotions after she was deceived by Sauron. Galadriel for the most part feels like a completely different character from season one due to her her experiences. She isn't as confident, struggles early on to come to terms with what happened, even, I would say, fearful. As regardless of her desire to stop Sauron, she believes now that she's far more privy to being deceived. So at least for now, the layers to her character are a welcome addition and setting up some exciting elements for her journey that she's about to go on with Elrond at the tail end of episode three. I already did kind of tease that Elrond was one of my favorite characters, but I truly mean it. I think he has the most complex character arc so far motivation-wise, regardless of the fact that pretty much everyone around around him is trying to do him dirty and we're seeing the different personality here from season one to season two where the Elrond of this show is feeling a lot more akin to the one that we would see in the Lord of the Rings films. Another major win for season two in my opinion is the fact that Sauron is now revealed. We don't have to go through that whole mystery angle of season one where which one of these characters was actually Sauron even though it was very obviously Halbran. The Sauron, Halbran, Anatar, whichever name you want to call the character because he has several forms. He's featured heavily in season too, and I was actually kind of surprised at first that we are continuing that facade of Halbrand, just so he's able to have some conversations with Adar and Celebrimbor. At least keeping up the appearance of Halbrand made more sense with Celebrimbor. The stuff with Adar didn't really go anywhere. The interactions between Halbrand and Adar more so are kind of just reminding me that Adar was recast in between seasons. I'm not sure yet how I feel about this new actor portraying Adar. It almost feels like a radically different character between the two actors. This version is much more stern and serious. Probably the coolest moment that we got between Adar and Halbrand was seeing the interaction in the past, a flashback between the two of them. That opens up episode one and gives us a lot more backstory between the two characters and their relationship. On top of the fact that it's a surprisingly violent and gruesome flashback without giving much away. But yeah, season two was a whole lot more fun anytime Sauron was on screen. In large part due to how he deceives all of those who he interacts with. I mean, throughout these three episodes, he is the gaslighting king. Seeing a master manipulator at work, rebuilding his strength, weaving together all of his sinister plans. The ominous undertones are a plenty anytime the story focuses around him. It's enhanced tremendously by Bear McCreary's hauntingly beautiful score. It is still very early stages in building the dynamic going forward between him and Celebrimbor, but that was also a nice touch. It's probably one of the things I'm most intrigued with for the future, because it has so much potential. I will admit, though, it does take some getting used to seeing him in this Anatar form. I don't know if this is just a me 
thing, but just something about seeing him in this form, there's just something off about it. I can't put my finger on it, but I'm hoping maybe as we see him more in this form and it develops, it'll grow on me. This was something I alluded to a little bit earlier, and that is the fact that there are so many different characters in the Rings of Power, so it is kind of tough, even through three episodes as far as plot progression goes. I would say that is one of the main things that this series struggles with. Through three episodes, there are some stories that don't naturally get a lot of plot progression, which is kind of disappointing when the series itself is only eight episodes. Through three episodes, there are storylines that I thought were decent, but it didn't feel like there was any substantial movement. One big example is the storyline revolving around the stranger and Nori. Don't get me wrong, I like the wholesome qualities of their journey. There's a sweet lightheartedness to them opening up to one another, even as the stranger is still fearful of his abilities. Through three episodes, their story doesn't progress all that much. In the three episodes, they're just wandering aimlessly through the desert. The only detail that adds some stakes to their story is a wizard played by Kieran Hines wants to stop the stranger before he can harness his powers. Something that sounds exciting on paper, but it's moving at a snail's pace, and there's so many other storylines going about. It applies to other storylines here too. Durin and Disa, they bring some comedic charm when they do appear, despite the fact they have to deal with a very serious dilemma for the dwarves. It's just they're not given any substantial screen time to develop their characters or their story. Outside of Durin and his father being stubborn to one another, they arguably might have the least amount of screen time between all the different storylines. It's probably between them or the Numenorians, who were interspliced in the last episode with some political drama that also isn't that compelling to me just yet because we don't get a whole lot with them. I did have a blast, however, with the Sildor storyline because he has a brief skirmish with a well-known spider and it's a pretty cool sequence. It seems like the developments here introducing a new character and him going on this journey with Arendir has a lot of potential to be one of the more exciting ones later on in the season. If there is a bright side, at least thankfully they don't introduce a lot of new characters to the story. I already talked about Kieran Hines a little bit. The only other noteworthy characters that are introduced so far is a female character named Estrid, who's somebody that I'm for sure intrigued about moving forward as she has quite a shady secret past she's keeping from Arendir and Isildur. Essentially, more or less, Estrid as a character feels like a stand-in for Bronwyn, who, if you didn't know, was written out of the show, and the way they explain her absence here, I found to be kind of lazy, unfortunately. Oh, and also, Ben Daniels gets some pretty great scenes here, too. Given how expensive the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power is, you could definitely see the money being thrown at you on screen with the visuals. The production design is impeccable, the orcs all look phenomenal, some of the CGI creature effects are kind of hit or miss, some of them look pretty stellar, and there are other ones that you can definitely tell as a CGI character. The hill troll, however, I thought was very exciting, but we only see him for a few seconds. It's only been three episodes, so I can't really knock the show that much for the fact that it's kind of light on action, but there is a couple exciting sequences. Aaron Deer has a pretty cool fight. There's at least one epic fantasy moment in every single episode so far, whether it be through Sauron or The Stranger or Aaron Deer. It's, as I said earlier, it is kind of tough to gauge season two of The Rings of Power overall because I don't have the full story in front of me. Through three episodes, some of these journeys feel like they're just beginning. Some of them are set up more exciting than others. I would say that these first three episodes are solid. There for sure is some room for improvement, and I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot more great stuff as the episodes go on, hopefully at least. For right now, these first three episodes, I think if you were a fan of season one, you're probably going to be a fan of season two. If you didn't like season one, I think that more or less you're not going to be won over, but there's some aspects that you might enjoy a little bit more in season two as we are delving deeper into these characters and the Rings of Power and Sauron. But now for my thoughts on the first three episodes of season two of The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, make sure you share your thoughts down below once you get a chance to check out the first three episodes on Prime Video that hit this week. Do you like the episodes? Do you not like the episodes? As always, thank you guys so much for checking out videos. I always do appreciate it. Make sure you like on the video and also subscribe to the channel to update reviews, reactions, unboxings, and more. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.